Hello, everyone, and happy Wednesday. Happy Welcome Wednesday. to Building Blocks. My name is Anna Hill. And I'm Fulgence Henry. And today we have a special Building Blocks for you. It's all about workflow. It's all about making our projects work for us and shorten the time that it takes to edit. So, Fulgence. Yeah, today we're going to be doing a live scenery workshop with none other than Liza Craft, the head of hey. customer <laughs> success at Scenery. So if you if you've attended the master class and you need a refresher or a supplement to the master class, or you just want to learn for the first time, or you're just checking it out, you're in the right place. Yes, and not only are we going to learn all of that with Lisa, but we also have a trivia for you. Yes, and we do. I want to see a lot of emojis for us because this is also the um, uh, closing of season one for us. Not season, but Q1, Q1. for us. So, yeah, so we'll be back it's, in Q3. <laughs> it's the Q finale of Building Blocks. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes, but anyway, um, let's get started right away. Unless you want to say hello to the fam real quick, or what would you like to do? Uh, we have, we can say hello. We have Mr. Moderator is here with us today. We have George Canellis. We have Maggie hello, Rose. George. Daniel Chi is here. And Dan Daniel! Roth. The Dan's, the Dan's are here. The Dan's are here. <laughs> We can and start now. The, the dance are here. <laughs> yeah, they came, they came for scenery. They're about to, to get seen. <laughs> so let's get into introducing Liza, shall we? Yeah. Take it away, Miss Hill. Liza is the head of customer success at Scenery Video. She helps Scenery customers make the best use of Scenery web-based collaborative video editor, which is designed to speed up and simplify the video workflow for teams. Liza is a video editor through and through, formerly working as a video producer and editor at NBC Sports. She's excited to show the Ecamm fam Scenery and dive into the magic of fast collaborative editing and without further ado here's liza, liza! <laughs> Hi, welcome to building for, blocks liza <laughs> thanks for having me i'm excited to be here yeah so i'm telling you our fam here our viewers they just they they like hands-on stuff so we're gonna pass it to you to show us how this collaborative video editing tool is going to simplify our workflow. Amazing. Well, I'm excited to dive in and to give you a little bit of an overview of what Scenery is all about. Scenery is a web-based collaborative video editor, as you perfectly gave my intro. And Scenery gives the novice video editor the opportunity to dive into scenery for the first time and to get to know what video editing is all about. But also it's familiar enough for your pro video editor who is used to other tools like Premiere Pro or Final Cut or Descript. Um, so we see ourselves as your perfect middle tool that is approachable enough for your novice user, but also intuitive and familiar enough for your professional video editor as well. So with all of that being said, I'd love to dive into scenery, answer any questions that both you, Anna, and Fulgens have for me, and get you into what scenery and collaborative video editing is all about. Yes, yes. And if anyone has a question for us in the chat, please be sure to place a Q colon in front of it. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Let's let's do this. Let's do it. I cannot wait, Lisa. Let's let's go. <laughs> okay. So, over here in my scenery team, once again, scenery is a web-based video editor. So, with that being said, you simply type in scenery.video into your web browser. Chrome is our preferred browser of choice, and you sign up for a scenery account and we will take you into the world of video editing. So, if you're 
recording an ecam, you're done with your whether it's a live stream like we are doing right now or a recording that you just do on your own, you'll be able to actually send that recording directly into scenery and you'll be given a few different options to dive in and get going. So, we'll do a custom edit edit, but you'll have the option to also edit with subtitles, automatic subtitling and scenery and also our AI assistant editor. So, we'll touch upon all of that, but just to give the lay of the land here, I went ahead and I actually imported one of your building blocks, uh, <laughs> uh, streaming recording episodes uh, a few weeks back. I believe it was Valentine's Day. And I this inspired me to actually buy a, a Shure uh, M, M7 mic. So I appreciate, I appreciate the episode and thank you because <laughs> hopefully my mic is sounding a little bit better today. Yes, it does. Uh, <laughs> great. So I went ahead and I imported this uh, uh, recording right into scenery and you'll notice that when I select on this clip here we actually transcribe the whole recording for you and the beauty of this is if you're someone like me who likes to first you know quickly scan the the video and see what are the best bites or you're the one who's performing the live recording so you'll know obviously what you were discussing you can quickly scan through this video and highlight different portions of the of the video that you like and favorite them. So perhaps we like this entire section here. I could go ahead, you'll see that it highlights in this preview window over here. I could star it to favorite it. And now you'll notice I've got some of these annotations over here. I'm just gonna do one more here. Maybe this is, I don't know exactly know what you were referring to here, but actually let's go ahead. I'm gonna search for Mike because it I love I, the- I love that. I love that so far, Lisa, mm-hmm. because we can, I mean, we can do so much. We can just take this and, and I add the video description right there. Like mm-hmm. that can be our thing. Exactly, yeah, exactly. So I'm like, just, you could see here, I'm, ta- I'm navigating through where you're talking about these mics. So I started out with my son's mic and maybe we love this bite and we want to use it for social. Let me ask you this, are you, are you both like, piecing together like just short social cut downs how are you taking your live recording and then you know further producing other content from this live recording yeah so for repurposing right now we're bringing it into cap cut and then we just okay. we just uh select the the option the the scene that we want and then do the uh captioning all of that stuff mm-hmm. awesome and obviously this is both of your shots so Scenery would be an amazing collaborative editor for both of you to jump in here. And Anna, let's say, you know, you want full gens to start piecing together a great social cut for uh, whether it's TikTok or whatever, wherever, whatever platform it might be. Right. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to start this re- region here. And now full gens, you could jump in here since this is a collaborative video editor and you could start to piece together what feedback that Liza, myself, or Anna gave to you. So I just selected, went from the transcript over to this annotation. I marked this as the intro, and I'm gonna start to add this to my timeline. So I'm gonna click Add to End, which is a really nice feature we have, which lets you just quickly drop that little segment right on. Same with here. Okay, maybe I already started this, but I wanna listen back and see what you're talking about. I'm not gonna play this back just for the sake of time here, but if I were to say here, you know, talking about M7, you know, sure, Mike, whatever it may be, I could save that range. Now, Liza, the editor, knows to go ahead and drop that section on her timeline. And now you can see I just nicely assembled these two sections right on the, my timeline That's from awesome. that source media. Nice. So let, me, let me stop there. Do you have any questions so far on that, you know, workflow of annotating that transcript, dropping it on your timeline? Um, and how that might be helpful for your current workflows. Yeah, I mean, for me, I have no questions. That is very intuitive and and very helpful. (laughs) Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. It just saves a lot of uh, time when it comes to just communicating back and forth and, uh, you know, sending, we're not inside the platform communicating with each other. It's, you know, either talking in person or sending messages back and forth. This just eliminates all of that and just centralizes everything. I love it already. I love it. Yeah. And, and I like, I like the interface is, is very familiar. Good. So good. it's, it's good. not like, it's, yeah, it's not like you have to learn a new, a new way, right. Uh, on the platform is, is very similar. It's similar to other platforms. So I, yeah. Okay. 
Awesome. And All right. Does the fam point, have any questions before we continue, though? Yeah. Uh, we have a comment from uh, Brother Reggie. Brother Reggie says, been using scenery for about a month. I love it. One feature request, the ability to export the modified subtitles and not just the original transcript. Awesome. I hear you. I hear you, Reggie. Um, so we will be exploring what that looks like in terms of exporting that SRT file from that tran from the from the scene um, that you create. Right now, what you can do is actually take the source of that transcript and you can download the SRT from the source. Um, and then from the actual scene itself, a scene in scenery is like a sequence in other tools, you could take the transcript of the scene. So this is what we've built out together here in this in this timeline, you can now copy that transcript over. So while we don't have the ability for you to download the SRT from the transcript yet, you can, uh, from the scene yet, you can copy the transcript. Awesome. Okay. And I don't know if I, if I missed this because I was just in, I was just like looking at the interface while you were explaining things, but say you want to edit some, uh, extra words or, you know, filler words and things like that, would you be able to delete it and then that edits the video or do you have to manually edit the video? That's a good question. So editing from the transcript is something that we are thinking about on our near term roadmap. Um, we don't have that feature quite yet. What I will say is what you can do is one, the, the option that I showed you, which is highlight different portions of that transcript that you like to easily then Ooh, let's go ahead and just drop that little section right on this timeline. So that's one workflow. The other is if you're somebody who likes to look to the transcript to make sure that you're cutting out certain words, you can easily look to your transcript that is hosted over here, start to trim that media on the timeline here. So if I'm going to start to trim from, you're going to notice actually, if I navigate over to this part of the transcript, I'm going to start trimming again. Those words are now disappearing. So you still get that effect of like, ooh, while I'm trimming here, I'm not even listening back to this video, but I can see what I'm trimming out, right? So if I mm -hmm. delete this section here, that now deletes from the whole transcript as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for explaining that. Okay. So, and, yeah, please go ahead. Oh, no, Dan, I, is Dan, is the, uh, Fulgence, is the Dan's follow-up question related to this one or? Uh, Dan is asking, can you do a command find for keywords to remove the filler words manually? Hmm. To remove the, yes. Yeah. So once again, we don't have the edit from transcript feature quite yet. Um, so what you can do though is search among our search here for, let's say you want, what you do want is, you know, talking about certain microphones, you can search for that keyword navigate to that section over here, highlight mm -hmm. what you want from that section, right? And then, actually I'll go to the source because you would do it from the source, right? So you would search for the keyword mic. So definitely this mic will pick up everything that's around you. Great, that's the portion I like. I'm gonna click E or add at end and boom, it'll be dropped onto this timeline here. And you'll notice we okay. have various keyboard shortcuts for you to help you out as well. I like having Love the it. transcript right there. I, yeah. I really, that's, that's a great, great feature. Great feature. So I would love to explore, obviously, some other workflows within Scenery that I think would be super useful, not only for the two of you when it comes to repurposing, but also for anyone who is creating, uh, just trying to get to the meat of the core of that video, right? So this is about an hour and 14 minutes long. Um, mm -hmm. let's say you're not somebody who wants to listen back to the full video, even though you're the ones who did the, the recording, you know, the key topics, but maybe you want a little assistance and you want a little help from our friend. We like to call the AI assist. So <laughs> with that being said, I'm going to select again, our source, um, which is right here lives in our, our library of our project assets. And I'm going to select AI assist. And when I click this button, you're going to notice that we give you a variety of different prompts and we also identify what the, the topic of the video 
is about. So this was a product demonstra demonstration. We did a pretty good job of identifying that. You're, you're, both of you were talking about various different mics to use. So mm -hmm. from that, we picked that up. And now from here, you can, again, for that social cut down that you're looking for or whatever it may be, I could give a summary under five minutes and I can click that prompt. I can make it catered specifically to the episode or I could use the scenery prompts that we already fulfill here and I could click generate and from there, we will generate a nice summary under five minutes. And I'll show you that in just a second, but before I do that, I wanna call out one more thing. So I'm gonna click the source one more time. I'm gonna to navigate to my properties panel. And you're gonna notice we also give you an AI summary of what was talked about. So you can use this summary to your advantage to mm -hmm. then say, okay, the speakers in the transcript discuss different microphones and audio setup. So um, I'm gonna just use that key portion here and I'm gonna copy that. And I'm gonna go back to this AI assist again and I'm gonna click summary under five minutes and I'm gonna get a little bit more specific here. Extract the most compelling quotes that discuss different microphone, discuss different microphones and audio setups um, that will be combined to create the best summary of this video that's less than 550 words. Okay, now from here, I'm gonna click generate. Before I do that, you can also add it to the current scene that we're in. So right now we have one scene that we were working on or I could generate a whole new scene within the project. So. We're currently in a scenery project, which ultimately is where you will create your videos. But I'm gonna generate another scene here and you're gonna see the AI editor hopefully do its magic and process here. This is, you know, this is great because not only can you do use this for, I mean, you can use this for different things. You can use it for blogs. You can use already the, the content is already there. You can use it for captioning. You can use it for multiple, Multiple um, uses. And you see how quickly that was done, right? Wow. So now mm -hmm. we have a second scene. So we had our first scene, which we're kind of just manually doing ourselves, right here. And then I'm gonna toggle back to my second scene. You could also see the two scenes are represented here. And now, obviously we can make the, our own judgment whether this is a good cut down or not, but we could navigate to our transcript to see you know, what, what we talked about. So if we wanna play this back for a quick second, I'm happy to play it back. Or we could quickly see that I'm maybe a little biased towards this video since I've watched it a bunch, but it did a pretty good job. <laughs> Today we're doing a, we're going to be testing mics. That's a pretty good intro for a summary, right? Um, but yeah. Anna and Fulgens, I'll let you be the, the judge of this and I can invite you to the project <laughs> after the fact. And now from that's, here- That's I've, pretty accurate. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. And from here, we can now do our bells and whistles and tweaking, right? So scenery not only has these features that allow you to speed up that process from the transcript or from the ASS. But now I can, you know, start to trim. Maybe I don't like a certain um or uh, right? I could delete that by trimming here or I could splice and I'm going to click delete. Which makes it easier for video editing. And the reason I say that is because it, it ripples everything. So let's say we don't want this section. I'm going to click delete and you're going to notice it combines all my clips together. And the reason mm. we, why we do that is to make a, your life easier for keeping everything in sync. So let's say we want to add some branded assets that I've got a nice folder here, and we want to animate this little cutie PNG right over here. I'm gonna just drag it on top. You're gonna watch my editing skills come into play here for just a second. I'm gonna shrink that Show down. Them. Perhaps I, <laughs> Perhaps I want this middle, this little cutie in the center here, I want it to animate on. I'm just gonna do some fun little, mm. let's have it move, let's have it move up. So it kind of moves up. Actually, <laughs> let's say we want it to move top down. So I'll have it move down. And maybe I want it to slide off, right? We want it to, or pop off. I'll have it, I'm gonna slide that animation. And I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see what I'm doing. So, and this animation here, what I've got, I've got a build in, so I could we're gonna what be it looks like. And I could build my build out. I could pretty well what that looks like. Uh, so that just showed me a little test of what, how I'm going to animate this animation on and off. And let me backtrack here. The reason why we built this main track is, let's say, okay, I want to duplicate this. I'm holding down option and I'm dragging. So I'm creating a duplicate. You could also command C, command V, which is a copy paste. But let's say I want, I don't want this little portion here, but I want to make sure that this 
little cutie stays on top of this exact moment of this video, what mm -hmm. I can do is I'm going to click delete and you're going to notice that stays on top. And that's why mm. that's the purpose of this main track. It keeps everything in mm. sync that lives above the main track or below it. And that is awesome. That Incredible. is pretty awesome because sometimes when you cut things, it just takes everything that you have there, unless you have a trick like this. Exactly, uh, yeah, we, it, we speed it up for you. Yeah, yeah, okay. You know, okay, I, I'm, I'm, I'm here, I'm here. I can continue I unless we have other... Okay, yeah. No, other there's questions plenty to from explore. the fam. Any questions from the fam? Should I keep going? Keep going. No questions so far. Yeah, Everybody's watching along. Okay, great. So right now, as I mentioned, we are in our timeline editor. Um, I'm navigating to my project media here. So you'll notice that I have all my assets hosted out into this uh, project assets section over here. We imported our footage. Again, if you're coming right from Ecamm, you could import directly from Ecamm into Scenery. But we have these all other import options as well. You can import from Google Drive, Google Photos, Dropbox. Um, YouTube is not something that we're offering quite yet. This is just something internally that I turn on for myself so I could prep this demo for you to be transparent here. But you do have the ability to uh, record via webcam, voiceover, screencast, and we have stock media options as well. So we went mm -hmm. ahead, we imported, but you'll notice in this project page, I also have stock media. So I can actually look to all the, you know, if I wanna look for a fun little intro, I could just do, I don't know, let's do hip hop, something fun, right? I could search mm -hmm. for hip hop, uh, future hip hop, we could preview what that sounds like. Hey. Know, could you hear Could you hear my video, my audio yeah. there? Yeah, okay, cool. you can hear it. Yep. All right. Let's say we like it. I'm going to add that to my project. We'll go back to this project tab over here. You'll notice it's go going to be imported. It's already queued up. Great. Now we've got our building blocks of assets over here. And let me preface that I had some help from Anna and Full Gems here. Given that we have built a collaborative video editor, I'm able to easily jump into this collection here and share it. That way, anyone could upload assets right into this project with me. So both Anna and Fulgens were not in this project with me, but I gave them access and the way I did that. So I'm gonna jump back here for a second. You see our project assets. Right now we're in timeline mode. I'm gonna jump back to our project page because this just gives you a nice overview of all the assets that live in your project. So mm -hmm. it's just a nice view for you to not have to worry about your timeline editor yet. If you're somebody like me who likes to get organized, this page is for you. So I went ahead and I created this collection here and I double clicked into the collection and I actually shared it. And I said, anyone with this link can edit the collection. So I copied that link. I slacked it over to Anna and Fulgens. They jumped in here. I said, can you please upload some building blocks assets for me to use for the demo? And boom, there, there they were immediately. I did not have to, you know, wait for a back and forth email, have them send me, you know, via Dropbox or wherever it may be. It was right there waiting for me. And now I have those assets ready to, for me to go. So it is a really nice opportunity for you to collaborate with others, whether they are on your podcast or there's somebody who is just helping you edit. Yeah, I mean, that is that is an incredible feature, especially, I mean, at least for, for us, we um, edit, I, I see us using this um, with our clients as we edit a lot of videos for them, especially when after we have a live stream and they say, hey, can you, um, can we, um, can we repurpose part of that? And then sometimes they do have to send uh, footage or supporting documents that they forgot to send or they would like to replace. And it's either Dropbox and then we're like, okay. And then sending the link of Drop Dropbox and sending and then making sure that that stays and that it looks good. And this is just one click and everything will be organized in the library. So that I think it deserves some great stuff. It's, yeah. It's, 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 yeah. Yeah. And that I collaborating, love yeah. Yeah, and I love how instantly you receive Eliza. You receive it right away. It was just in, like almost like it was in real time. It was awesome. Oh yeah, it was all in real time, and that's a perfect segue into what's next in scenery. So I'm gonna jump back to our timeline here, and this is a great video. Let's say we love it. It's good to go. We want some. We want just somebody else to take a second look, right? Maybe <laughs> Anna, you want Full Gems to make sure that you he likes what you're about to publish to another social platform. 
Um, we're going to head to scene review, and that's where that real-time live collaboration comes in and that feedback loop comes in. So right now we're in scene two. We could rename this scene, by the way, and call it, you know, building blocks, promo, whatever you want to call it. Let's actually do that right now. So I'll do building blocks, promo. And now we're in a scene, which is not the source. It's the output of whatever we you know, created together, and it's about a minute and 24 seconds. So again, similar to that collection, what I can do is I could share this project and with anyone with the link can review. So you don't have to necessarily be in this team with me in order to review this. I could click on anyone this link can review, copy that link. Honestly, right now in real time, I could send this to both of you, and you could jump in here with me and give me feedback. So perhaps you tell me, you know, from this point to this point, let's add, we'll see how good my typing skills are here. Let's add the uh, building blocks logo in the upper left corner. And now in real time, as the editor, I could jump in here. So whether it's you, Anna, or Fulgens, you're the editor here in this scenario, I could jump back to my timeline, open up my comments track here, see that, ooh, lies on my reviewer just added a time coded comment from this point to this point she wants to add the building blocks logo great let's go ahead let's drop that logo right on here boom let's do it for exactly the time she wants and now i'm just going to shrink this she said upper left corner right um, i'm going to bring it up to the upper left corner and now in real time on mm -hmm. your end you see that happen right away Mm -hmm. So again, you don't have to send that draft back and forth anymore. You don't have to export. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. all can be done right away in real time. Amazing. Incredible. Amazing. And then and I have a question about, um, so we're going to be adding assets and, and perhaps even more video to this as we're collaborating and probably they need to add a different footage. Um, what is the storage? Is there a storage limit based on like packages or things like that? Or how does that work? Amazing question, yes. So within Scenery, you have a free plan that you can upload up to 10 gigabytes worth of footage. Um, you can upgrade to our pro plan, which offers you 500 gigabytes. And then if you have exceed that you know, limit of 500, you will talk to our sales team and our, our, our amazing you know, enterprise team that will discuss what it means to have an enterprise plan um, within Scenery and we'll customize that with you. Um, okay. So that way we can work with what is best suited for you. Awesome. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Uh, and I, I have a question as well, and also Dan has another question. So uh, my question is, when we're sending comments to somebody else, how do we get notified of those comments? Is it is it an app or are we getting a notification via email? Yes, awesome question. So right now, if I were to leave a comment on a project that full gens you were editing, you would get an email from me. We understand that emails can be annoying, so you can of course turn that off if you want, and I'll show you where to do that, but we'll batch up those uh, comments into one email thread for you, so you won't have to get a million pings. Um, I will mention that we are adding app mentions um, in the near future, which would actually, again, directly ping the one person via email um, versus the whole team. And then we also in the future will be adding notifications in app. So right now it is via email. Um, just to quickly highlight where you can actually go ahead into your user profile, you could actually turn off those notifications if you wanted. Got it. Got it. So I'm going to awesome. jump back into this project here, but that's a great question. Yes. And uh, Dan has a really good question. Dan asks, uh, with multiple people having access, are there any safeguards to protect the creator of the project? Amazing question. The short answer is yes. So within any project you create, you are the owner of the project. So what that means is you have the ability to kick certain people in and out of your project, but you also have the opportunity to invite various people into your entire team, right? So if anyone in my team and I invite to my entire team, they can immediately have access to all of these projects if I wanted. With that being said, when you create a new project in Scenery, you have the opportunity as the owner of this project. Oh, you're not seeing, I don't believe you're seeing this project visibility though, but you'll be able to turn this team setting that I see right here 
to just private, and then from there you'll be working in a private project. That's not to say that you can't change those permissions when we go back into this project here. I click share. Right now, Liza is the owner. This team can edit it. I can remove their access. I also could give, again, Anna or Fulgen's access to review or, or to edit it if they want it. So they could be a guest in my project if they have a scenery account, right, um, in their own personal scenery account. So the options are there for you to make sure certain people are in or out whenever you want. Incredible. Okay. Okay. So question, right? Just to make sure that I understood that correctly. So uh, the last part that you mentioned. So if, for example, I'm editing a project with a client and I invite that client in, they don't need to open up an account with Scenery or do they to be able to interact? Great question. So if you, if the purpose for that client is just to review, they do not need a Scenery account. Like a Google Doc, you could send anyone this link can review the way that I just uh, showed in the last um, scene review page here, copy that link, send it off to them. What they would get, they would not get that timeline editor because, again, they're just reviewing. You don't want to mm -hmm. give them access to mess with your edit. They'll get the scene review and they'll get the project page, so the original assets, but they will not mm -hmm. get the timeline or the canvas. Now, if they did create a scenery account and they already you know, are cruising in their own account, creating their own content, you can invite them as a guest in your project just a one-off time. You also can invite them to your entire team as well. Mm. Okay. All right. So, but if they wanted to edit something or add footage or co to collaborate to the project, do they need to have an account or can they still do it as a guest without regis registering? If, if they're a guest, they can, um, they can upload into Scenery. They will need an account in order to edit, though. Okay. Mm. All right. Awesome. Thank you for that. Okay. Yes. But they can upload the same way that today I went ahead and I sent you that this this collection here. I said anyone with this link can edit the collection. You were able to easily import that footage, right? You did not necessarily have a scenery account. Right. You were able to mm -hmm. dump in that footage and boom, I was off the you know, editing on my own. But if I wanted you to necessarily like jump in and edit with me, you would be prompted to create that account. Okay. Nice. Great. Thank you. We have some. So, okay, uh, so we have some great questions. In. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, hello, Vincent. Vincent uh, asks, uh, when I copy the transcript for blogging, it came over as a talking point, meaning line by line as I speak. Can it be in a different format? The transcript for blogging. Yeah, so you're, the, from that, you... What I'm hearing is that I copied that transcript and then it came in at a as a different format than than the than they would like, correct? So right now, what I mean, right now, what we provide is what you are receiving on your end. With that being said, what is I guess my question is, what would that format want? Would you want it to be? Would you want it to be that SRT file because that is something that we are thinking about, um, but. Or would you want it to be a TXT file, or do you just want it to be formatted differently? So I think that would be my follow-up question. Mm -hmm. But um, to answer it right now, this is um, the the offering right now for for that format of the of the transcript. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And uh, we have the very popular question <laughs> from the ignited teacher: How does this compare to Descript? Great question. So Scenery's focus is collaborative video editing, right? So we look at ourselves as the all-in-one solution for collaborative video editing. While Descript, I know, has collaborative tools and features, we do really pride ourselves on the fact that we have a full flexed um, video editor itself. So when it comes to just how does it compare to Descript, I would say that Scenery is an amazing video editor and I would encourage you to try it out and let us know what you think. Um, Obviously, Descript, I know, started as a podcast tool, so they are very focused on that editing from transcript, which is an amazing feature. I know it's one that we get asked all, all the time. Um, so we started out as vi video first, um, and that has been our primary focus, really honing in on what makes a video editor a great editor. And from here, now we have implemented things like, you know, highlighting your transcript and being able to 
add that transcript right onto your timeline. So we are getting into the world of transcription, but when it comes to the actual video components and of video editing, we really pride ourselves on the fact that our tool is familiar enough and looks familiar to other uh, pro video editing tools out there as well. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agree. And um, the Ignited Teacher also um, both Descript and um, Scenery have a one month, the 30 day trial that you can give it a try. And um, Paul, I believe that's, and actually, um, Lisa, you mentioned it was what, Ecamm Friends? Yes, the so discount? on the Perks page, yeah, on the Ecamm Perks page, we're offering a promo code. So whenever you jump into Scenery for the first time, you get to trial our pro tier for seven days, but we are offering for the Ecamm fam uh, the ability to trial Scenery for a month uh, free. So please navigate to the Ecamm Perks page and plug in that promo code, which is Ecamm Friends in all caps at the Scenery checkout, and you'll be able to get Scenery for a month free. There we yes. go. American yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, and now uh, okay. Vincent, Vincent followed up uh, with uh, what he was, uh, he, he clarified. He's saying, uh, no, he, he would like it in a paragraph form so that he can copy and post it into a blog. I see. Okay. So you, and is it the transcript that he wants a paragraph form of? Yes. Versus okay. line by yep. line. That makes sense. Yeah, I think right now what we do is we give you the transcript that's being shown here, right? But you can easily go into another tool like Notes, or this would be my personal advice. You could go into Notes. You could go into Google Docs. You could go into any other documentation tool and paste that transcript in and reformat it yourself by you know deleting different spaces and getting it into that paragraph form for you. I will say though, if you are looking to just get a nice summary of your, your video, I will show again. If I navigate to my project assets here and I click on this source, what we provide for you in the, pro in the properties is a summary of what's being discussed in your video. So uh, if you do want it in a paragraph form like that, we do offer this summary here for you to take this and you know, bring that description in to perhaps a YouTube description summary or something like that. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. So okay. there are. Thank you for explaining that. Yeah, and I would love to dive into some automatic subtitling and reformatting as well. But any other questions before I do dive into that next uh, no set? Questions no? at this time. Let's dive in. Sweet, okay. So right now we've got this awesome one minute and 24 second cut down we used from our AI assist, right? But let's say, you know, we were jumping back to here. Let's say our, our reviewer says, we want captions on this because some people don't like to necessarily listen back to video. They just wanna read the subtitles. Well, Scenery provides a really nice ability for you to quickly generate captions. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how that's done. So you could create captions from the track that you're on. So this track has audio that we can see here and we want to um, add subtitles from this track. I could simply click create subtitles from track. Now you also have a whole title library that you can explore here. So if we wanted to add some fun title elements, you can always do that. But we also can create subtitles within this library up here. So again, I'll click create subtitles. And again, I will choose which track I want to create subtitles for. So my main AV is the one that has audio. I'll select that track. And from here, I could choose the style. So Anna and Fulgens, what style would you like for your subtitles? Let's word do, uh, highlight. Yeah. <laughs> All right, word highlight, cool. So I'm gonna click create. And you're gonna notice we already transcribed this video for you. So automatically, we create all these subtitles for you based on that transcript. And Perhaps we misspell your name. That's okay. You can easily change the words in each subtitle here and make sure that it's accurate to what is being said. Now, I also, you can see that logo here, I can move this up, you know, right directly and it will automatically update the subtitles for all the re remaining uh, boxes previous to it and after it. I can also, this is not our color of our brand, right? I could click my highlight color and I could save colors catered to my brand. So building blocks, it looks like that it's got that nice maroon, like ish red. I'm gonna click on 
this color here and I'm gonna save that to my library of colors. But it kind of blends in with your shirts. So maybe I wanna actually use the, the building blocks yellow. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna just click my, my um, eyedropper here. I'm gonna add it to my team colors. And let's use that one, right? So it wasn't the yellow that we initially chose, but it still is yellow. Mm -hmm. And now it will update, that color will update for all the other subtitles as well. Same with, you know, if I make this a little bit smaller, same with fonts, you could add your own team fonts as well and we will automatically adjust um, all of that for you. So if we want to add a box too as well, we can make this even more fun. We could change the radius to make it like rounder. And now we've got that cool boxy looking, you know, maybe we want to make it more opaque so it doesn't look so in your face. Maybe we want to shrink this down a bit. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. So now I've got these awesome generated, you know, subtitles for us here on this video, but Let's say it's great, it's good for YouTube, we've got this great cut down, but maybe we want it in different formats. Maybe we want it in a, six, a nine by 16 for TikTok. Perhaps we want it in a one by one for Instagram. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna duplicate this scene. And you'll notice that we say we have now a copy of it. So if I go back to my project here, you'll see now we've got three scenes we're working with. You could also see them here. And I'm gonna rename this. We'll call this Building Box Promo let's call this TikTok. And now from here, I can change my scene settings. It's 16 by nine, but I'm gonna change it to a portrait mode. I'm gonna click continue and boom, now we've got our nice portrait mode. We've conformed the, that building blocks um, logo to fit the, the mold of this um, aspect ratio. Same with these titles here. You can simply just, you know, fill the frame here, reframe it. So if it's Anna speaking, we can focus in on Anna here. If it's, you know, full gen speaking, we can go ahead and do the same thing, but for full gens over here, and then we can now push this off to social if it's good to go. We also have the ability for you to copy the transform. So if I like where full gens is placed for this, for this size, mm. every single time I could copy that. Um, and now, uh, it looks like Anna's speaking here. Now full gens, you're speaking here. So perhaps I want that. I could go ahead and paste that transform as well. Um, once I, you know, copy and then I can also paste that transform here too. So now that's great. We, we can move you a little bit, but it allows you to do that as pretty quickly too. That is great. Yeah, and you know what I'm liking if I understood correctly that, and this is something that I had a little headache, it was last year, I was um, captioning a video and I was trying to do the, I was trying to take a, a section of the video and not have captions there and have captions in yeah. the other one. And it was giving me such a hard time to do and I was frustrated beyond, so frustrated that I had to finish the project in Final Cut, and then bring it to CapCut, and then do that there. So what I understand here, if I understand correctly what you just explained, I can select the cap where the, the scenes that I want the capture, the captions on, and leave some that I don't, right? Absolutely, yep. So if we don't want this caption Amazing. here, I'm just deleting that box. And what you bring up a really great point, Anna. Like, let's say if you have the two of you on this track here and you want actually both of you to be shown on screen at the same time, what you can do, and this is me getting more into my fancy editing over here, but I could duplicate <laughs> this so that way now I'm on two tracks here and I can have, you know, both of you on, on screen. And the reason why I'm doing this, you'll see in a minute here. I could Very cool. you know, make this a little bit larger for just Anna and then full gens will make you on screen as well, right? But we don't want you to be cut off, so I don't know, let's just crop you a little bit here. But we still got that building blocks logo in the, our upper left, so don't worry, we're not cutting it out. Um, and then from here, you know, again, I could just make this a little bit larger, get that building blocks out of the way. And now from here, what I can do is I can create subtitles for both of you at the same time, right? So I can go ahead and generate another track, 
create another track up here. So now you've got two tracks going. And the reason why I want to bring that up is because you could have, you know, when Anna, when you're speaking, you could have a color for your voice versus full gens could be a different color. So you could differentiate who's speaking when, or, you know, full gens isn't speaking right now. So we could have it, this track going for you. I could delete these subtitles here, you know, and now it's just, you could alternate who's speaking, what color you want for each speaker, because we will automatically conform whatever you change. If we make this, let's just kind of bring this into action. This is a very messy edit, so please don't judge these editing skills right now. <laughs> but let's say this is, you know, this is the, you, you're you speaking, you're in the green, and you want full gens now to be in the yellow. You have both of those working at the same time, so that's a nice way to compare. That's great. I love it. That's dope. That's great. And that's probably sort of a, a little answer, maybe, to what Paul's asking. Uh, Paul's asking, can you define who the speakers are in the transcript? Another amazing question. That's something that we are working towards within those, you know, the, the, the editing from the transcript and identifying the speakers. But right now it is just speaker one and speaker two. Awesome. And I'm, let me guess the purpose coding. of that is to... The purpose is for the, the sake of just being able to identify, you know, who's speaking when, and I can quickly navigate to who's who. Is mm -hmm. that the assumption mm -hmm. there? Yes. That makes sense. Yeah, that's a good, mm -hmm. good feedback. And speaking of feedback, we want to hear it all, right? We are building amazing features. You can see we're building a lot of great features. So the more feedback we hear from the Ecamm fam, the better, because then we will be able to build those features for you. So please do keep them coming. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. This is awesome. I, yeah. Yeah. And the, yeah. The, 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 Being the able to do partial caption. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Fulton. Yeah. No, I'm just saying like the, the workarounds that one has to do uh, to uh, edit a video when we're co-hosting in the same space and you're trying to make it go vertical and everything. And I just love how uh, scenery just makes it easy like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can, yeah, Fulgens, you could be in the TikTok version while I'm working on this promo over here, yes. you know, simultaneously. So it doesn't necessarily mean you both need to be actually in the timeline at the same time, which you can do, but the collaborat collaboration has many meanings, right? You could be asynchronously collaborating, which is uploading that, f that footage into a collection that I've created here, or you can um, just actually be in the same timeline together. That oh, awesome. that is great. That is it. great. I love it. Uh, and then on the note of staying brand consistent, we also are, we haven't released it yet. So you're seeing a good, nice first look here, but we'll be able, we'll be um, introducing a brand kit. So you can actually save those assets and um, drop them right onto your timeline and save them uh, for you, for you later down the road. So if you're in a new product, let's say, we'll just call this, um, project two for the sake of what we're doing here i'll be able to quickly navigate to my brand kit and drop in those building blocks assets right into my project as well mm -hmm. that is awesome so right yeah uh we have another question from vincent vincent asks can you show how uh to save the font and colors yeah absolutely great question so um you can do it, first of all, you could do it from the edit, the actual editor itself. So we can jump into any asset that um, involves color, right? So this is a uh, subtitle box that I've got here. I jump to my properties panel. I'm going to navigate to highlight color. And you're going to notice that I click, maybe this is, you know, a cool purple, right? I'm going to just select add to team colors and boom, it'll be saved here. Same with my font. I can add fonts and it'll be saved now to any project you create. But one step further, if you wanna see where those live, I'm gonna actually jump back to my home page here and I'm gonna to go to team settings and you're gonna notice within team settings, I have brand resources and you'll see all those colors you can manage here and same with LUTs and fonts. And so perhaps we don't want this um, orange in here anymore, I could delete that, right? And you can manage that. So anytime you jump into a new project, those colors will be saved for you. Nice. Nice, nice. Very nice. So what, um, Lisa, what are some useful shortcuts, like your favorite shortcuts that you've written? 
Yeah, that's an awesome question. So I've got a few that I really love. Um, one, let me just quickly highlight again in this, oh, this keyboard shortcut menu, you can see all of our keyboard shortcuts here, right? So the classics that I love are X, which is split from time code. So I'm going to jump back to our uh, first scene that we've got here. It's pretty simple. It's a nice string out of what we've got here. And I'm going to start to just start creating some splits at this at the time code. So I'm going to click X. You'll notice I'm now creating cuts at mm. this time mm. code here. So now I'm going to start to delete. And again, you're going to notice that main track ripple effect here. I'm going to click delete and it automatically brings all these clips together. So delete, it's going to migrate and merge all these clips together. So that's a really nice feature that I personally like. Also within scenery, I love our range tool. So if I click R, I'm going to now be in a range and I could select but we also let you do that too but R is our range tool again I'm going to click delete. Lisa we You're lost you we lost you a little bit of, um, when oh, you were sure. explaining the other can you explain it again please yeah let me explain that again so my other favorite tool is range which is R and what that will let you do is again similar to that split tool you could create a range that you don't necessarily and as I do that I'm going to click escape just so you can see that one more time so I clicked R I'm going to highlight this section that I don't necessarily want, and I'm going to click delete. And when I click delete, you're going to notice that it didn't automatically merge everything together. And the reason that happened is because it created a gap. But a gap in scenery is really nice for like, let's say, ooh, actually I want to put in a cool like animation in here, right? So we've got our cool mm -hmm. building blocks intro. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to drop that in there. So now it's creating a nice, um, uh, intro here for me. I'm going to jump back to my B tool. And now I've got that cool intro and I still have that gap, but it's like a nice placeholder, you could think of it. Mm. And now I'm going to mm. delete that gap. And now, boom, I've got that nice placeholder removed. So that range mm. tool is really nice for like, ooh, I know I don't want this, but what do I want to put here instead? Mm. Again, maybe it is that little transition here. I could easily just pop that in and boom, it pushes this out and I could then delete. And now it's there waiting for me. The other thing that is my other favorite feature here, and I'm just going to delete here. Again, we've got this placeholder here. Perhaps I want just to add this um, intro for the at that exact duration. So maybe I want it to be, you know, right here from here to here. I'm going to select our overwrite key, and our overwrite key is something that will come in handy with the main track. And I'm going to hold down Option and Command while I do this. So I'm holding down Option and Command on my Mac. And I'm going to drag this asset one more time into on the main track. And you're going to notice it's going to overwrite this, exactly what's being placed here. So it now took place and it took over that gap. So we, even, we lost some of what was spoken here. Mm -hmm. And that's really nice for actually, I don't really want, you know, Maybe I want to replace this entire section with something else. I could go back to my project assets, right? I could go to my source. Maybe it's from, I'm just trying to get accurate here. It's about a 111 to 120, so it's about eight seconds long. So I could find what a good replacement is from you know this point to this point. Let's say it was about eight seconds long. I'm holding an option and command, and I'm dragging this in replace of everything else that's downstream. So now that just replaced everything that was, was living on my timeline previously. So that overwrite key is really good for just replacing and replacing. Very nice. That is awesome. That is incredible. Yeah. <clears throat> oh my gosh. So, okay. There are no, no there are no questions right now. For just, would we like to do the trivia now? Yeah. Real quick to break it down. Yeah. Um, but before that, I just have one question, right? Because I noticed that uh, aside from the range tool, when uh, you're um, creating the splits and you're deleting something, it just creates, it has that magnet effect and it just combines the clips together. What if you didn't want that and you just wanted to, that gap to stay in from where you remove that clip? Are you able to turn off that magnet feature? So... A really great question. So if you want to get back to your old ways of video editing, not necessarily using that that ripple effect, you can easily avoid the main track. I'm just selecting all these clips here. And I'm going to drag all this media on my V2. 
So you could totally avoid that, and then, you know, let's say we had this cool little guy up here. As I start to trim, you're going to get, you're not going to get that ripple effect, right? So you get that gap there. So that's kind of giving you that old way of video editing that you're probably more familiar with, which is totally fine. But once again, the reason we built this main track is so that you can keep that ease of use of, hey, this little guy's up here. I want him to stay exactly there. I don't mm -hmm. want him to move. So as I trim, it's going to move with me, right? So that's why we mm -hmm. built this main trick. Nice. Things in sync. But again, if you want to have that um, gap, you're going to hold down Option, Delete, and it will create that gap for you too. So you still could get that effect if you want. Holding down Command will once again allow you to create those gaps in yes. place of the main track. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love how it stays in place without having to take an extra step to have to group the clips together. It's just automatic. That's awesome. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. And my last favorite um, shortcut key before we get into the trivia um, that I want to just go back to is that E, add to end. And that will really come in handy when you're somebody who is just quickly listening back to your video or doing it from the transcript. Once again, ooh, I really love this section over here. I'm going to just highlight that whole range. I'm going to boom drop it to the end of this right here. I'm going to click E, which is add to end, or you could click this button, but E is my favorite key. So boom, it just drops to the timeline here. Again, I'm going to navigate to my transcript. I really love this byte. You could see it's hi being highlighted in this portion here. E, boom, it just got it added to my timeline. So that's going to become your best friend when it comes to just quick string outs, right? Diving in and boom, add to end. And now I'm just quickly, you could see add to end, add to end, add to end. And it's just adding that continuously over and over again. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Great. So with that, I'm, I encourage everyone to try out Scenery. Give us your feedback. You can always reach out to us for customer support and help. Um, we would be able to answer your questions. We also have an awesome feature. We could actually, given that it is a collaborative video editor, we could dive in and we could jump into your project with you, help you out, get you unblocked and cruising through your edit. So we're here to help. But you, of course, can always invite anyone else to your team as well. So um, I'm excited to get you all in here and hear how we can continue to support you within scenery. That is yeah, so that was great. That was it. great, Liza. Oh, I, I, I can't wait to like, you know how you explain all of this and now we just have to do it to make sure whether we get all the shortcuts and then we get the, because there are things here, like you're saying, that they're modernized <laughs> from the... <laughs> Go so getting it. used to the modern way of editing, which is which is great. Uh, so thank you for explaining all of that to us. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you know what? Now let's let's get into this trivia. Let's get into this trivia. So Eliza gave us some fun facts before uh, before the show, and we have a trivia based on the one of those fun facts. And this is for your chance to win. Let's see if we have it here. This is for your chance to win the vintage, the vintage Ecamm Fam T-shirt. This is the retro Ecamm Fam T-shirt, right? So whoever gets this, I don't know why it's zoomed in like that, but whoever gets this correct will win the vintage Ecamm. There we go. Boom. There it is. The awesome perfect vintage for yellow. The summer. Yes, perfect for the summer. All right. So whoever answers this first will win, and you have a few seconds to do so. And without further ado, let's go. <laughs> Liza, a big Chicago sports fan, grew up with an English bulldog. Can you guess his name? CM Punk, Sammy Sosa, MJ, or Pippin? Haha, <laughs> there's no Googling. <laughs> <laughs> huh? I mean, but I mean, there was like a big Chicago sports fan. These are these are all these are all Chicago athletes. So, <laughs> uh, let's see, let's see. <laughs> wow, Pippin! I remember Pippin. <laughs> <laughs> and. The correct answer is Sammy Sosa. 
Ooh. Sammy Sosa. Sammy Sosa. Coach's corner? Yeah, we have a winner. Yay! Congratulations. I unfortunately okay, didn't get to pick the name. Brother did, but it's a good name. <laughs> so, so you awesome. used to call him uh, like the entire name? Sammy. Just Sammy. Okay. But it, his name was named Sammy Sosa. And I actually pulled up a picture. I imported a, vi- a picture from him. Let's see him. And I. Oh. We were oh, wow. He was a big dog. Look at you. Sammy Sosa. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. Uh, coach, congratulations. Uh, yeah, Paul is asking you for your name. Okay, Les. Les. Okay, Les. Congratulations. Contact marketing at ecam.com. Marketing at ecam.com to claim your retro ecam shirt. Congratulations, Les. Yeah, and because, because you all know how we like comments and things like that. Also, we have um, Liza, that not only is she an amazing editor, but she also calls herself, uh, what is it, Chazam? Like uh, the Chazam, Shazam. right? The uh, Chazam. Shazam. So, You're right. Okay, so she could, if you give her any name of a, what is it? Go go ahead, uh, Liza, what well, is that? <laughs> yes, no, it's a great setup. So if if it's my secret talent, if I'm at a restaurant or on or songs playing on the radio, I could usually name what movie that song was from. So mm. can't really, if you give me a name of a movie, I probably could try to name a song from that movie, but it's usually the reverse. If I'm hearing a song, I could usually identify, oh, that was in the TV show Friends, or that was in the movie, whatever it may be. So, got you. Well, my... we cannot play little bites because we will get copyrights. But, <laughs> yes. fam, if you enter like um, uh, that, if you know a song that was in a specific movie, give the title in the comments. See if our friend Liza can guess the song that was there. <laughs> I think it's a show too. I should have joined that show, or I don't know if it's still on air, but it was called like. Shazam. I think there's a show. <laughs> I know. I should. I should sign up. Oh yeah, the Shazam, the Shazam one, the game show where they do a few seconds and you get yeah. <laughs> yeah, and there's a whole show that like you have to fill in the lyrics, right? Like you, and then like they play yeah, the song, yeah, you're yeah. singing along, and all of a sudden they stop the they music stop and you it. have to continue singing. Yeah, it's uh, on Jimmy Fallon's show. Totally, I've, I know that one. And they spray water at you and <laughs> through the mic yeah. if you get it wrong. <laughs> That'd be terrifying, but fun. (laughs) (laughs) Fam over there is like trying to Google some movies or something to do. But yeah, I I can see how listening to the song will be easier than than having to type it. Do you have one, Anna? I don't because I... Hmm. I, It has to be like, I'm not good with... Yeah, I'm not good with the singing and all the stuff. The only movie that I'm thinking about that was really fun was like... Shall we dance? You know that movie, Shall We Dance, with Cheyenne and oh yes, 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 I, it's and been Vanessa. A while, yeah, it's been testing a while, you. Though. It brought you all the way back there. <laughs> yeah, I don't I, putting me on the spot. I will say my other fun fact I I gave was the Broadway, and I have seen many Broadway shows. So if you could guess which Broadway show I've seen five times, that'd be impressive. But five times, five times, The Lion yes. King. Nope, not The Lion King, but close. Okay. It's a popular one. Dang Wicked. <laughs> Wick- oh my gosh, Wicked was, gr- I loved Wicked. I was, I see why you watched it so many times. I loved it. So good. And it's yeah. going gonna to be a movie um, in the upcoming year as well. Ooh, nice. Nice. So fam, one. any other questions since you don't have a song, for, I mean a movie <laughs> title for Liza. Uh, any other questions regarding uh, scenery and its integration with Ecamm? Any other questions? The, Paul has seen, what, the Phantom 15 times? Oh my gosh, oh, wow. Paul, okay. <laughs> okay. That's impressive. I don't think I've ever seen that. A Broadway show 15 times. Wow. That is oh, awesome. You know every line, I'm pretty sure. Paul, you know every single line of that. Wow. <laughs> so, 
So fam, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Liza. And as you, um, you've been hearing us, this is going to be um, the... Um, end of season one, we will be back on Q3. But yes. Marshall, Marshall is actually starting his uh, graphic show again on April 4th. So make sure you tune in for that. And um, Lysa is going to be available. So if you have any questions um, about scenery. So Lysa, how can they reach you? Yes, as I mentioned, in our product, you can easily, you know, chat with support and get in touch with us. But you can, of course, email me at liza at scenery.video. I'm here to help. Um, you could also email help at scenery.video and our team will be responsive and be able to get you up and going into scenery. And please do use um, the Ecamm uh, Perks page promo code, which is Ecamm Friends, um, and get going in scenery. We're excited. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Oh, so they're dropping cats. Cats and Paul is like, no cats. Well, I haven't seen that show either. I haven't either. But I hear good yeah. things. Yeah. Uh, let me I'm see. How about this? How about this? This is uh oh, this is an eighties movie. Anna and I we okay. watched this recently. I'm just gonna give you maybe like two lines from it. Um okay. when you got the glow, your body's gold. Can you sing it? <laughs> <laughs> When you got the glow, your body's cold. When you got the glow, uh, I'm trying to think of like John Hughes movies. Lisa, you, Lisa, you just, oh. you just told us like you were like, it, it, you were in this times so, because that was way back when. You probably weren't. You probably were a little thing. I don't know. I'm trying to think. What's the movie? Now, when you got now the glow. I need to go watch it. Your body's <laughs> going, you got the glow. Oh my God. I'm very impressed with you, Paul Jones. I, I'm disappointed in myself that I can't get this. I'm thinking, I love John Hughes <sighs> movies. That's an 80s movie. 80s movie. <laughs> this one was Wait. from... Huh? No, that David Hunt is asking, is that The Matrix? The Matrix, like, what about The Matrix? Matrix oh. is my favorite movie. One of I don't them. know any music from the Matrix. It's all um the Matrix was all elect electric. It's all yeah, synth synthesized Techno. stuff. Technical. Yeah, Techno, that yeah. I would not and no, I will say like Hans Zimmer, if I hear a Hans Zimmer like tune, like whether it's from Interstellar or like Lion King, whatever it is, like mm -hmm. I'll be able to pick up like, oh that's from Lion King. That's from Interstellar. But like I'd have to hear it. That's part of the, the I guess the, right, the right. tricky yeah. part of my my talent. <laughs> let's see let's see so now you have to go look for that for that song <laughs> <laughs> it's from it's from the last dragon oh, i've never seen that oh my gosh you will love you will love the last dragon it's a classic it's a classic okay. you love it. it is a classic it is a classic you're gonna be okay. you're gonna be what bro all the way in the 80s <laughs> i love oh, yeah. it i love oh, yeah. 80s i feel like i should have been born in the 80s i but the I 80s wasn't. was the I was best. Born in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> the 80s, 80s awesome. were the best. 80s is awesome. Yeah. And actually, yeah, definitely. And I think when when did when did that come out? That came out in the in the late the late eighties. So definitely check out the last dragon yeah. you'll love it i'm gonna love check it. It yeah 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 well Lisa, we will let you go and fam we will see you monday on enn um i believe easter is this sunday is it i think so hold is on is easter this sunday yeah we're all so. here like not knowing but i do <laughs> think that easter is this sunday so if you celebrate easter happy yes, easter is. yes happy it is. Easter. okay so yes happy is. easter if you're celebrating <laughs> Happy bunny hunting, all of that great stuff. <laughs> yes, and uh, thank you for joining us for the was was it the 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 the, the Q finale of Building mm -hmm. Blocks, and we'll be back in July, and uh, Marshall will be joining you on April fourth. Uh, but we'll yes. we'll be here with ENN, and we'll have some uh, you know if we do have some breaking news updates for ECAM, we'll we'll do some Building Blocks in between some pop ups here and there. That is right. That is right. So, but in, in in the meantime, enjoy. We will see you on ENN. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for being with us for Q1. And we will see you on ENN. And for Building Blocks, we will see you on Q3, which is in July. Thank you so much, everyone. This is Anahil. 
and Fulgen Sending, and we're with Liza. Liza! <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. This has been awesome. I appreciate it. Thanks, fam. Have a good Bye. night.